Hi, I'm Wack. Hey, and I'm Pat, and this is another edition of the Weekly Orbit Weekending, September 22nd, 2023. Uh, I'm here with Wack, who's back at home. This is two episodes in a row, broadcasting live from the the uh, worldwide headquarters of Rocket Fuel. How's it going, Wack? Yeah, it's good, thanks. Like, yeah, everything's fine. Uh, awesome. Well, we got another busy week uh, in Rocket Pool land. Let's start out with our stats and uh, deposit pool. And um, it's been, uh, as the trend continues, looks like about triple digit ETH uh, on a daily basis. We had one day on September 20th of uh, 1,183, but we're still um, trudging along here as the deposit pool is full again uh, this morning. It's 18,027. Um, any thoughts on the deposit pool? Yeah, I, I talked about it in the Rocket Fuel yesterday, actually, um, for the first time in a while. And it's just been really lackluster. Like, if you look at the monthly um, monthly uh, deposits by date, um, you'll see that we're kind of going back to pre-Atlas levels, like, you know, March, February, January, kind of those numbers. And that is just kind of reflective, I think, of the kind of position we find ourselves in the market. And, like, you know, there's just a lot of negativity around. There's a lot of... Um, like bear market blues basically have gotten hold of everyone right now. Um, the one thing that I'm taking solace in is that, you know, we're at 20,000 ETH deposits pretty much for the month, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe 23 or 24. If you scroll down a little bit and look down, look at where, when ETH bottomed, which was in June of um, June of 2022, you know, then we were getting like 7,000 and then July 4,700, August 5,000. So that is kind of like what I'm comparing it to. And, you know, I, th mm -hmm. I think that, you know, we're, we're doing really well compared to that point. But um, it's definitely like, you know, we've gone back to our mean pretty much. And that's also reflected in the RPL price, right? It's kind of gone back to its mean in a sense. Um, mm -hmm. And it's showing upward trajectory, of course. But that hype period now is like truly behind us. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. now we just got to focus on the next hype period that's going to come. So, yeah. Yeah, I think overall, the mar I mean, it's just not rocket pool. It's everything. If you look mm -hmm. at the, yeah. the beacon chain queue, it's yeah. it's down significantly. So people are staking less, which means people are going to be minting less our ETH and the yep. uh, ETH price is down. So is everybody. And, um, yeah. you know, we, we were the outlier. I mean, I think Lido and our uh, rocket pool, the bear market was chugging along the uh, price of ETH went from like 4,800 down to 1,000 or 900. Yeah, 8, 8 and yeah. Rocket Pool and Lido was <laughs> were going yeah, up. And so now yeah. we've reverted back. We're just like everybody else now. Um, yeah. It's the it's the dog days of the bear market. Mm. And I, I don't think it's unique to Rocket Pool. Um, no. I, this, is, this is what to expect. I mean, if someone said to you, Rack, a couple of years ago, hey, we're going to have a bear market and... Uh, you know, Rockapool is not going to be immune to it. Would you be surprised? No, exactly. You no. Know, and the, the, the sad might thing be like, yeah, well, of course. <laughs> yeah, the the thing that hurts, like, and the thing that's like, um, like really fostering a lot of the negativity is that so many people got caught up in that hype, right? And they bought the top, and they became node operators, kind of like at the top, and they're the ones that are getting hurt now because they are not earning RPL rewards mm -hmm. on their stake. They don't have any money to buy more RPL to add to their stake to bring it back up above collateral. Some of them just refuse to do it out of like some kind of principle or something, like whatever their ideology is around that. But that's kind of like what we, the position that we're in now, where um, you know there's a whole bunch of node operators who are under collateralized and they are struggling, and that in a sense, is bringing a new kind of negativity that, you know, we haven't had in the Rockable community since the bear market started, right? Like, even when, you know, in the June right. 2022, Rocket Pool's RPL token hit um, $7.50 and 0 0.0075 on the ETH ratio. And, you know, we double that and in terms of ETH and um, three times that in terms of US dollars. But, like the problem is that like that's that would be fine for all of us who've been holding for a while right like we're up in terms of like eth and stuff uh, but uh, people who got in during the peak they're the ones who are like really really like down bad basically and sadly they they're talking about it a lot and they're uh, you know which is their right to do that of course but they are then um mm -hmm. what's happening is they they're 
like a whole wave of negativity is kind of coming from that and that is kind of hard to avoid sometimes so yeah sure yeah <laughs> well let's move on to the next stat our smoothing pool uh which yeah. is the next reward period depending on your time zone is about six to seven days away uh, mm-hmm. right now we're at about 370 on the balance yeah. so how how does it look this month compared to prior months whack yeah so the last couple of months were like you know we got some really nice big blocks that like made it like a very strong um smoothing pool i think this one's just kind of like uh, average now like um kind of like april yeah. 23 and um maybe july 23 um and the reason why it's higher than those already is because of course you know we've got more validators online now so like they're gonna have more coming into the smoothing pool but in terms of like the actual amount that is in the smoothing pool now is is like in line with those it's kind of like an average month which is which is fine like it's it's okay but um you yeah. know as we saw the last couple of months like you just need one big block that can change everything and you know in the last two months we had those two mega blocks um so if we get one of those again you know it could be an all-time high month i remember we were saying last time right like you know it's just an average month and then we got that huge block like in the last week <laughs> and then went vertical then it was right there. it was off to the races like yeah, yeah. In, in there right there right like i think it was like the day after or a couple of days after we recorded our episode and then that happened so that can always happen but you know at the moment it's looking like just an average month and that's fine like you know smoothing pool is still doing well and it's still chugging along just fine so yeah, I'm I'm still happy to be part of the smoothing pool. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Okay, on to the next stat. Uh, I got the trading view open for RPL ETH ratio and Lido ETH ratio. And um, right now we're at 0. 0.01307 mm-hmm. on yeah. the ETH, uh, RPL ETH. And Lido's at 0. 0.00092. Um, mm. Obviously, trend line for both these are... On the downside, it Sorry, is a bear market. Um, I'm, perhaps there'll be a little bit of a blip uh, this weekend. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. But um, there was an interesting uh, survey in Discord. Uh, where does RPL peak in, in ETH terms in the next bull market? And uh, this was the survey. It looks like WAC, the majority of people think that we're going to be above 0.05 ratio at the peak yeah. of the next bull market. Yeah. I, what do you I th- think? I, I, I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. <laughs> like that would be, that would be magnificent. Um, I think the, the main targets to look at would be like, you know, the previous all time high, which is number six here. So a lot of people, in yeah. fact, almost everyone seems to think, you know, we'll, we'll beat that. Um, like, you know, six people said six, seven people said seven, two people said eight and 14 people said nine. So almost like more than 50%, more than 70% of the participants here think that we'll be get a new all-time high in RPL price versus ETH. Um, and I agree with that. Um, it's just going to be interesting to see how it plays out and what the what the journey to that will look like because it might be that, you know, we don't go up to that number like in a straight line from now to there, right? It might be a jagged line and we might get more down before we get more, before we start going up. But um, I think that's that's good. Right. I, think we'll, I think we'll hit a new all-time high and then after that, like, we'll just see what the sentiment is like and what the market's looking like to see where we go from there. Yeah, and, you know, it's, uh, RPL is becoming more and more of a thinly traded token because so much of it's staked and off the market. I, You know, during a bull run, you, as we see, it can go it can go down steeply uh, quickly, but it can also go up steeply, you know, steeply yeah. as well because of its thin liquidity. Uh so it'll be really fascinating to see. So I guess we're trying to say, hey, there's a there could be a light at the end of the tunnel here mm-hmm. uh, once the bull comes back, perhaps next year yeah. or the year after. Who knows? Um, but yeah, keep your heads up, folks. Definitely. Um, now, one last thing on RPL. Our friend Ramana posted in Discord a uh, challenge. He says, okay, here's the deal for the party. That's a weekend party. As long as the ratio is less than 0.014, I will buy one RPL for every five buyers of one RPL and show me their transaction. Uh, this is only valid during a current unspecified time this weekend. So it yeah. um, looks like he's doing a challenge saying, hey, buy some RPL. I'll match one for every 
that's a little confusing to me. What yeah. What is he so, trying to say there? <laughs> yeah. So I, I reached out to Romana and I was like, okay, this is kind of confusing. Let's let's make it a bit more like simple. So what he'll be doing is he'll be matching buys at twenty percent. So as long as he gets five buys in minimum, five people will share their transactions on um, on trading, and then then after that he will start matching those buys. So. Um, we already the, okay. So it basically is like the weekend. So uh, as the weekend starts in Australia, that's when that's when the weekend will begin. And as it ends in Hawaii on Monday, then then that's when the weekend will end. So it's like a three day period really instead of a two day period. So it's already started. People have already started okay. sharing their buys, and um, he's waiting to get five before then he will start um, uh, matching them. So he'll be buy, he'll be buying at twenty percent. So if anyone buys a thousand RPL, then he'll buy two hundred. Um, and if you know, like like that, basically. So that's that's kind of like made it a bit more streamlined. So this was a bit needlessly complicated, but um, I talked to him and I was like, look, let's let's simplify it a little bit. So he'll just match every buy at twenty percent. So yeah, that, that's where well, that's, that's where we're at yeah. the moment. Yeah, twenty percent. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, we'll see what that does to the price. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, let's move on. We're gonna talk a little about node set on the next sec- segment here, and. Uh, I think we we're going to be talking about notes set a lot over the next uh, several months, and I posted on Warpcast a great visual of how notes set works. Uh, credit to Chris Marino, he put this together, and this is a this first slide is a um, kind of shows you how Rockapool just works by itself. Okay, you've got yeah. uh, the node operator on one side, you have depositors on the other. Um, Deposits go into the deposit pool. Um, node operator deposits dessert. In this case, eight ETH. Uh, they take twenty-four from the deposit pool, and um, essentially, that's how they stake to the beacon chain. And then yeah. on the next slide, it overlays node set. Now this gets a little, a little more busy, but I, I thought this was a good visual um, for myself because you can see where, uh, you know. The the extra yield is going to the node operator. So if you're a node yeah. operator on Rocket Pool, you get all your normal commissions. So you get your 14% on the um, protocol ETH, the 24. But you're also in this scenario now. Chris he just made this up, but he uh, and we we'll see what the final commission is. But he said if you get half of the 14% yeah. on the uh, node set, that gives you an extra 7% yield so uh anyways it's, maybe i didn't describe that as eloquently as i could have however uh i think this is really great because now you got to start seeing like numbers and uh this is a nice visual to describe how this is all going to work uh, yeah what are your thoughts yeah so like this is where we can start seeing how node set will be like you know the layer two of rocket pool and uh, like how that's going to basically be um, a black hole for RPL definitely um, like they, they're they just going to give you rewards for having your RPL in there so I imagine like you know you were just saying about how a liquid RPL is with half of it staked so far once node set goes live I expect another like 20 to 30 percent at least be deposited into node set especially as it gets lindy and as it gets battle tested over the like coming months like this time next year I think like 70 to 80 percent of RPL will be staked so that then shows you just how little they'll be liquid and how you'll get like huge uh, fluctuations in price with like decent sized buys right because there'll there'll only be so much RPL in the market that can that, that that will be available for that because like it just makes sense to just put it in node set um now with the eth side it becomes a little bit more complicated because it kind of has to balance with the deposit pool of of the rocket pool on the rocket pool side so there that i think that will be um the short-term limitation for um node sets growth where you know they'll get eth they'll get they'll get um really good amounts of rpl but there'll be like a couple of areas of bottleneck i think and like please correct me like if i'm wrong if you're like wonder or nick um i think the the deposit pool and uh rocket pool will be a limiting factor and also the node set eth deposits might be a limiting factor too even though it might be best rates of return um, it might be that you know they're just not liquid tokens, and they don't have the integrations in DeFi, etc., that others might have. So that might cause some uh, bottlenecks as well. But 
I really think that you know there's going to be some good stuff happening with um, Nordset, and um, I'm excited to see how it's going to look like. Yeah, isn't it interesting how the modular thesis has kind of migrated over to now Rocket Pool? You have the yeah. you know ETH is scale you know transaction per second, and the, the protocol layer of Ethereum is you know say 16, but it's just going to do what it does, and the L2s built on top of it are going to once they're going to you know knock out thousands of transactions per second or you know eventually millions, yeah. and then Rocket Pool as the base layer. It's going to do, it's limited, you know, in its scaling, but it's not going to try to scale all by itself. It's going to use, like, here's NodeSet solution to, to build on top of it. And mm-hmm. it's going to be able to process a lot more deposit ETH um, than, say, just Rock and Pool by itself. So yeah. it's, it's really interesting now that modular thesis is playing out even with Rocket Pool. And um, I, I, I think by next year, you're, you're right. This is going to, if we need something to get excited about, I think NodeSet is the one on the horizon that's um, going to really be um, helping us scale and, and, and grow Rocket Pool. And it's, yeah. it's, uh, we'll see Absolutely. how it works out. I think yeah. they're looking towards uh, first, perhaps first quarter next year as a launch date. It, but they need uh, Houston to go live first. Yeah. So from my I think understanding, that, I think yeah, I think those numbers. <laughs> That that timeline seems kind of right. I think they'll um, they're going to get around the forced exit thing by having people pre-sign uh, exit messages for their validators. So if they are not validating up to the right qualities, they'll just get booted from the network and they'll get their ETH and RPL taken back from them, which is fine, you know. Um, and then they'll uh, once um, you know forced exits and stuff goes live as well, then they'll have a lot more control over their validator set. But for the time being, like they need some of that. Um, beacon chain like um, communication between the consensus and execution layer stuff to happen which will um, happen as well in in uh, Dancun um, in the Cancun mm-hmm. upgrade and then hopefully um, you know once Houston goes live then uh, Rocket Pool will incorporate that stuff and then uh, NodeSet can go live after that so they're ready they I think they're going to be ready definitely and I'm really excited to see how how uh, much of an impact it has on Rocket Pool. Um, I think a lot of people are actually like sleeping on this, and people outside the Rocket Pool community don't even know about it really. Even people who are node operators and stuff oh. they don't know about it, right? Like so, yeah, it's just going to make being a node operator so much more profitable as well because. And Nick has said that you know, um, with a person like they'll maybe like give them ten or twenty potential validators extra um, compared to what they have, and. Um, that is like just pure profit, right? Like that you'll be getting for minimal extra um, hardware requirements that you'll be using. Um, the criteria, of course, will be that you know you're a node operator, existing node operator, and that you've got a good uptime and that good like good setup that you're using, and then they'll give you like more based on that. And I think they also want to um, make it so if you're KYC'd, you know, if you are like a doxed person, and if you share your name and address and like your information with them. And then they might be willing to give you even more on top of that. So that's that's going to be really interesting to see how that works out because I think that's going to be make it really profitable to be a Rocket Pool node operator, which will then hopefully get more people wanting to be Rocket Pool node operators, <coughs> which will then like do good stuff for everyone. So that that's kind of like the stuff that I'm just kind of seeing. I don't know how it end up working out in reality, but um, like the pieces are kind of there, and you can kind of semi put them together in your mind, you know, about what it's going to look like. And I think um, once that comes together, it'll be really exciting. Yeah, and uh, in Discord, in the Node Set Discord, um, L3O, he writes or they write, do we have any projections as how to much how much extra profit you'll make with Node Set? The numbers I ran show 0.168 ETH per year of extra profit per mini pool, but that's just a rough estimate. And Nick S writes back, cut that in half and you'd be closer. So if we use that, let's say you get 0.08 ETH more per validator. And you get ten validators extra from Node Set. Yeah. That would be about say point eight or let's say just, rough, just roughly ETH. one extra ETH. Yeah. One extra ETH for doing basically nothing more yep. uh, per year. That's that's nice. Um that's really nice. And yeah. I think they mentioned in uh, I don't know if it was Wanderer or Nick S was saying, you know, in the beginning we're looking at probably, you know, low teens in terms of number of validators per node that they want to spread this out. Yeah. So, you know, say 10 and you're getting a 0.08 ETH for basically doing nothing extra. 
Yep. Um, obviously, there's smart contract risk uh, there. I shouldn't say it's risk free, but that's going to be not, attractive to I think a lot of people. That wouldn't be for the node operator, right? Because you are just running a sidecar on your smart node stack. Like it'll be integrated with the smart node stack, such that you'll press a button, basically, pretty much the way I imagine it, um, and then it'll just be like you'll get validators added to your to your node. They won't interact with your node at all, so you won't really have anything to lose in that sense. Um, the the withdrawal keys will be set to the node address wallets, so like that will have the they'll have their security aspect from that side. So I think that it'll basically be like free money. And the thing is as well, like right now ETH is about you know sixteen hundred dollars. So that's not what you want to be thinking of, right? Like you think like in the bear market, in the bear market sixteen hundred dollars. In the bull market, like you know um, estimates range between like you know ten thousand ETH, twenty thousand ETH. Um, that is a very nice like. Uh, addition to your income for for nothing basically like so i think it's gonna be a very 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 attractive proposition for a lot of people and um mm -hmm. i'm gonna be i've already submitted my name to be a, a to be a node operator and like um i think a whole lot of other people did i think over 100 people have already submitted their names to be node operators with notes yeah and it again i mean before even before node set um or eigen later that's the most profitable node operators are rocket pool. I mean, you're getting, you get the commission plus the smoothing pool. And now you get, you can opt in to node set. You can opt into eventually Eigen layer yeah. and you know, you get all this extra yield. Right. Yeah. So I'm hoping that that's going to also help grow our node operator set um, as well. Exactly. I, it has you know, to right? like it, getting just, all this extra yield. Yeah, exactly. It just makes sense. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, and finally, the last thing on RPL, I'm sorry, Rock uh, Node Set. Uh, Evan Jones hosted a Twitter Spaces with Marceau and uh, who was the third person on that? Ewan. Ewan, yeah. Ewan. I'm yeah. Sorry. I don't really um, know. Ewan so if you want to hear more, yeah. yeah, if you want to hear more, they, they discuss Node Set at length during this uh, Twitter space. So I'm, I'll post it in the show notes, and you can listen to some of uh, commentary on, on NodeSet. But again, we're going to be covering this. I think I'm, I'm really excited about it, um, and I think it's going to be a real driver for growth. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be huge. Okay. Um, so on to the next thing. Uh, Joe just popped in trading. He says he's excited. Today I get to start, I get to start building Houston support into the smart node. Yay. So um, officially September 18th. It's uh, it has begun the next upgrade uh, for well at least on Joe's side. Of Joe's side, yeah. Perhaps the team has been working on. They've been working on it too, uh, of yeah, course. That, so, but um, we're, we're, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say Kane's been working on it for a few months already, like with the on-chain voting stuff, and um, I'm sure that you know the other yep. team members are working on integrating the EIPs that are going to go into Cancun as well. They just need to get the spec for that basically, and then they'll they'll start incorporating all of that into the smart node and into like the contracts. So it's it's looking really exciting, you know. Like um, I think that um, it looks like it'll be January. They'll be ready for audits, and then. Um, I, I guess it's just a loose timeline at the moment. It can change, of course, but then it might be March or April that we get the upgrade on, on Rocket Pool, um, Houston, and then um, the next one after that, Saturn, might be the end of 2023. So um, I'm hoping that, you know, that timeline will be a little bit, um, like, um, like it might be a that might be a bit conservative and it might hopefully get it a bit before then. But at the moment, that's what we're kind of, like, being led towards thinking is, um, like, quarter one, end of quarter one, beginning of quarter two for... Um, Houston and then quarter four basically for uh, Saturn of 2024. And just as a reminder, what what is in the, what are the upgrades that we're going to have in Houston? Yeah, so Houston will have um, the main one is going to be on chain voting for uh, node operators. So that's going to remove something called the Guardian wallet that the team controls at the moment. So any upgrades that you want to do to the Rocket Pool contracts, uh, well, the, the tweaking the the variables in the contracts. That's done by a team wallet right now. And going on to on-chain voting, that means that um, it will happen through voting um, from PDAO, basically. So it removes a huge area of centralization. Like the last, basically, area of centralization that kind of exists, um, it will remove that. So that would be really great. Um, and then, um, of course, you know, we'll get the EIPs from Ethereum, which I forgot the number now, uh, but um, 
that will allow communication between the different um, execution and consensus layers, which means that you know we'll be able to remove some PDAO um, duties as well. And then on the node operator side, um, the main thing they're going to see is a new um, um, system for the node operator that um, Joe's saying that he's working on here. And then that will use um, HTTP hooks instead of API. I don't understand the exact technicalities, but basically what it means is someone will be able to make a front end for it. And then your node will look just like a website, basically a web 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 front end so it'll make node operation even easier basically for, for node operators so that those, those are some of the things that are there i'm sure there's other things as well but like um, i can't remember right now but um yeah that, that's that's going to be the the main stuff to look forward to in in houston fantastic yeah okay and on to our last talking point here um danny ryan he's made some comments about lido and uh, evan van ness has a uh, podcast here that i linked to um we'll see if we can hear the audio on this no i can't hear it okay yeah so basically danny he's uh he's been a little outspoken lately regarding lido uh he's concerned about the uh market dominance you know they're almost at a third you know what happens if we get to half and the potential um you know, downsides to uh, finality on the network and uh, uh, the risk in the DAO, you know, basically three wallets control uh, the voting power on Lido. And so uh, we're going to link this in the show notes if you want to listen. It's quite an, it's about an hour long, so he does go into um, quite a amount of detail. Um, Wack, do you have any thoughts? It seems like the, the Ethereum development engineers and teams seems to be there seems to be a growing concern regarding lido is it is it valid is it over are we overreacting what are your what are your just high level thoughts on lido yeah so w one of the things we have to realize is like like people in the rocket pool community have been saying this stuff for a long time um evan recently has been like you know really um getting the word out about um lido dominance and how it's a problem and um, Vitalik and Danny Ryan and others in the Ethereum Foundation have been kind of like echoing that. So um, this is definitely a serious issue. Um, Danny Ryan so much as goes to say it's something that keeps him up at night. So it's it's a kind of a big deal, right? But um, I think that where we stand right now is that um, there's no real way to uh, limit Lido without like there's no real way to limit them. However, if they become bad actors, then there's things that we can do to uh, basically curb their uh, influence completely like do a social slashing kind of situation and that of course is a last resort and i don't think that will happen but um the fact that you know really important members in the ethereum community are now um, should be like sending fear to um lido stakers and and um people who are staking with lido because the risks are that much more real now right it's not just in the abstract like um what Jasper said in his paper, like, you know, why um, our ETH will flip ST ETH. Like, he really, like, did a big breakdown of the issues with Lido in that. I recommend everyone go and read it. Um, but now, like, I seem like that, you know, that idea is kind of growing. And as Lido's influence grows, of course, you know, hitting 33% or just about hitting 33% is, is a big um, milestone and one that we don't want them to pass. Uh, but if they do pass it, then, you know, um, we really have to be in a position now where we can... Um, we have to, like, as an Ethereum community, we have to take action against it and um, be ready to mobilize. And, you know, the Rocket Pool community has been on the forefront of that for a long time. And now, hopefully, we'll get other people kind of joining our ranks. And um, for the health of Ethereum, right, it's not, you know, for Rocket Pool specifically. It's like um, we want Ethereum to be as strong as possible. And Lido is definitely um, a weak point in Ethereum at the moment. And they were even saying, like, you know, um, in the beginning of the call that like this impacts their thesis for um, ETH as of asset as like value adoption and like it's value accrual. Um, so those are all things that are really important. And um, I just hope more and more people start to like understand that that's what's happening. And they need to, they need to say like not Lido, like Vitalik said, like that's, that's where we yeah, need to get to. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> One of his quotes in the video is quote, if someone crosses one third and people don't give a shit, then the immune system of the Ethereum community is clearly clearly not as strong as it needs to be. Yep. Uh, so that kind of gives you a taste of uh, how he feels regarding it. 
but yeah, take a look. Um, they'll be in the show notes. And, um, you know, we'll be talking about this more. Um, and I, I'm sure every, it seems to be more and more of a growing topic, whack. Yeah, yeah absolutely. as we go forward. So that yep. concludes that concludes today's show. Obviously not financial advice. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we may take a break next week. I'm going to be traveling, I'm going to Dublin, Ireland, and then going to be traveling, uh, biking around the Netherlands with a couple of friends, uh, Amsterdam, Groningen, uh, Delft, and Utrecht. So uh, we will see. Uh, we, may not be, have, we may not have a show next week. So if you don't see us in your feed, that's why. But, um, you know, we'll definitely be back in two weeks. Uh, so yes. uh, we're looking forward to that. Yep. See you. Thanks, everyone, for watching. All right. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Take care.